Okay. So welcome, welcome everybody. Happy Thursday. Uh, tonight's class by your own vote is focusing on Janu Shirshasana, but not the straight ahead version that we usually do, We're focusing more on the side lengthening, side stretching version of it. Um, and no, I will not tell you what your other options were. <laughs> Um, but that is that is the pose for tonight, is Janu Shirshasana. So head to knee pose is what it translates to. And it's a seated forward fold. So you've done it probably 10,000 times in class before. And what I like a lot about um, using a seated position as your end goal or your end thing is that it makes us kind of rework in our minds what makes us feel comfortable. Right, because most of us have a kind of easy preference for seated postures, right? It's much nicer to be sitting down than it is to be standing up, right? It's a lot less work in general. That's what we think. For people with tight lower backs, that might not always feel like it's true, right? That sitting can be very challenging to do because it requires a much different amount of strength in your core to keep you upright, right? So it's actually easier for some people to be standing, even though it feels like more effort. So the thought behind trying to say my seated position is my end goal. How do I make this seated position efficient and comfortable and accessible makes us start to look at what is it that really I define, we define in our bodies as comfort, as ease, right? Because in theory, Janu Shirshasana is not a difficult position, right? It really isn't, but to get to the full, uh, potential of the pose. So full spinal extension, full hamstring extensions, full side body reach uh, is you can see this in a lot of other positions where it's challenging to do. And if we don't put that same awareness into doing it seated, then we're missing out on the benefit of the pose. But we're also missing out on this uh, ability to determine why do we seek certain types of positions over others? Right? Why do we think that because it's seated, it must automatically be easier and there is less effort that I have to put in? Right? So where you start to define what is comfort to you in your yoga practice to me is relevant. Right? And if there is that place that says, I love the poses where I feel like I don't have to work at all. Lovely to notice, right? Because that's what you do with the rest of your life. I love my life when I don't have to put in any effort. That's my favorite. Right? <laughs> So just notice that because we want to be in a place where the effort that we put in is willing and we feel like it's purposeful, not that it's mandatory that we always have to work hard, but that we're willing to put in the effort to get the greatest reward, the greatest fruition, the greatest experience, right? So that's our practice. Janu Shirshasana, head to knee pose. So comfortable seat if you're not there already, already using those words over and over again. How do you define your seat as comfortable? Yogic terms, we mean sustainable, a seat that you can be in for at least a moment or two without worrying about how am I going to stay here, without tensing. So find your seat, and that means you have to adjust how you're sitting. See if you can relax through your feet. You can relax the tops of the thighs, and you can relax the glutes. Feel yourself settling your weight into your sit bones, into your pelvis. Even if that means that there's a subtle rounding that happens at the lowest part of your spine, allow that to happen. And then let your shoulders lean forward just a tiny bit. Yeah, so not hunched forward, but lean forward just a tiny bit. Change that angle. There you go. And then from inside, start to pull your spine a little longer. Yeah, but don't lean back as you do it, right? Keep your shoulders, your chest leaning slightly forward and then pull yourself up from inside. Don't push the ribs out. Keep leaning the shoulders slightly forward, angling the spine forward. And then from the inside, pull up. Now relax your shoulders, relax your fingers, relax your eyes, your jaw, your tongue. Sometimes we say like you're suspended from the top of your head on a string. I want your shoulders slightly forward. You got it. And just take one more breath there, feeling how unfamiliar it is to not be leaning back. And go ahead and bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm, but without letting the shoulders tense, don't go straight into your jaw. Don't just pick up all of the tension you just purposefully let go of. Keep your shoulders slightly forward. Good. We'll open sound of ohm, take a deep breath in. 
Let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release your hands, please. I want you to stay seated, but if you are super high up on a prop, I want you to be able to come down a little bit. Um, yeah, and then hands to the knees or the thighs. So you can stay cross-legged if that's where you are, but I want you to be able to start to circle your torso. So whatever position you need to be in to be able to move your torso. Nice big circle. I'm just curious if it felt like it was more or less effort to have your shoulders forward to feel like you were purposefully bringing them forward while you were seated. And the reason for that is that most of us get into this postural habit where we push forward through our ribs, arcing the lower back or arching the lower back, but we actually are leaning backwards slightly, right? Our shoulders are actually leaning backwards and we, in our minds, we interpret that as being straight the leaning backwards. Good, start to move yourself in the other direction. So circle the torso the other way. So just the act of bringing your shoulders forward can encourage the ability to soften through the ribs, which makes more space in your middle back, which allows the lower back to lengthen. So it's resetting our interpretation of what straight up and down is or what um, comfort really is, right? The point of the practice, right, is that we are changing the body dynamics so that what we assume to be our resting state of openness is greater than what it was before. Good. Find yourself slowly coming back to center, back to stillness, and then go ahead and separate your knees a little wider, bring the bottoms of your feet together into Baddha Konasana. Again, you can be up on a prop here still if that's working for you. Baddha Konasana. Nice. So press the baby toe edges of the feet down into the floor, curl the big toes away from each other so your feet are very active, and then reach down for the underside of your ankles, not your feet, but your ankles, and pull up. Yeah. So I want you to, want you to physically pull up. So almost like you're trying to lift a barbell. So I'm reaching around the front of my ankles to hold under the underside, but then I'm pulling up. All right. So it's like you're trying to lift your feet up off the floor, but then press your feet down into the floor. So switch your hands, Lisa, just so you're reaching. Yep, and pull up. There you go. So just feel that for another moment where you pull up through your shins and push down through your feet. Good. And then keep this position of the hands. Start to squeeze your knees up just a tiny bit. As your knees squeeze up towards each other, push down into your sit bones. Good. And then start to bend your elbows wide towards the inner edges of the knees as you lean forward just a little bit. So I don't want you to move your elbows. I want your elbows to stay on the inside of the knees. And if that means you can't come as far forward as you usually would, that's okay. But I want you to use the forearms against the angle of the shins to keep drawing wide. So you're not trying to push your knees down to the floor, but you're trying to bend your elbows as wide as you can and have your knees squeeze up into your elbows. Good, now widen your chest here. So as your elbows are bending, you might find yourself hunching your shoulders a little bit. So lift your collarbones up, extend from the middle of your back up through the crown of your head. So your chest stays really open, elbows are wide, squeeze your knees in, press down through your sit bones and down into the baby toe edges of your feet. So legs really awake, spine reaching a little longer. Good, one more breath, don't let the head hang. So lift up through the back of your throat. Press your elbows wide, squeeze your knees in. Beautiful. And then go ahead and release, please. Good. Separate your feet even wider. Come up on your heels. So your knees are going to point up towards the ceiling. So it's like you're in a seated squat pose. Good. So your heels are as wide as your mat. Nice. Knees nice and wide. Feet nice and wide. Good. Take your right hand to the inside of your right foot or your right shin. Again, pressing the elbow up against the shin, squeezing the knee in towards the elbow. Stretch the left arm up to the sky. Good. So again, you wanna really have that uh, sensation of engaging the arm and the leg against each other, and then really stretch through that left side. So push down through your left butt cheek, and now see if you can lean arc over towards that right leg a little more. So actually round into your left side rib. So like you're reaching that left arm over your ear instead of straight up, reach it over your ear. That's it. Good, and still press your sit bones back and wide. Nice, and now bring yourself all the way back up to center. 
and switch sides. Take the left hand down inside the left foot, pressing the forearm up against the shin, squeezing the knee in towards the elbow. So they're both pressing against each other. And then take the right arm up to the sky. So straight up first. So you're getting that feeling of just opening the belly away from the top of the thigh. Good. Nice, you guys. And then start to stretch that right arm over the ear, rounding into your right side rib cage a little bit more. And keep pressing your heels down and dragging back. Good, keep your sit bones pressing back and wide. So again, it's like you're leaning forward slightly, shoulders and pelvis, leaning forward slightly. Good, one more breath, really round. Arc into that sideways. Good, and then bring yourself all the way back up. Nice, you guys. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Keep your feet as wide as your mat. Again, if being up on a prop is still serving you, stay there. You can always come down. Good. And then flex the feet here. So press down and so flex your feet hard. All right, curl the toes back as hard as you can. And notice if you are one of those people that when you flex your feet, honestly, as hard as you can, if your heels pop up off the floor. If that is the case, then congratulations. You hyperextend your knees, right? <laughs> now you know. But it's good to know because when you overdo that, then what you're really doing is you're locking your joint, which means that you're no longer getting a functional stretch into your hamstrings. So in forward folding, hamstring stretching always, press down into your heels and it's gonna feel like your knees are just bent a tiny bit. Good, so maintain that. Keep your heels down, your knees just a little bit soft and then walk your hands forward until you can find either holding your feet or your ankles, wherever you can hold on your legs. So it doesn't matter where that is. I just want you to be able to have a real actual uh, handhold on your legs. Good, keep your heels rooting down. Watch that your toes are not falling in or out. Good, keep your heels down. Good, keep your hands where they are. Lift your chest up so your arms are straight. Whatever angle you're at, doesn't matter. But keep your arms straight, lift your chest even higher. Like you're gonna bring your uh, back of your heart forward between the arms. Good, and then exhale, curl and round. So you're doing like a slow cat and cow. Keep your heels rooted down and just hands continue to hold onto the legs. And then inhale again, lifting from the back of your rib cage up and pull the arms up into the shoulder socket. And then exhale, curl and round. Watch that you don't press your knees down to the floor. <laughs> Keep your heels rooted, knees soft. Just continue, inhale, lengthen your spine and exhale, curl and round. Good, so Taylor, keep your hands uh, connected to your legs. So you're actually holding on to your legs the whole time and kind of cat cowing. Good. Yeah. And again, if your knees are a little bit bent, totally good. All right. The idea is to start to get into this feeling of stretching <laughs> through the length of your spine. And this is what forward folding is really about. And if we just lock through the legs because we think that's the best hamstring stretch we're going to get, again, that's more effort than is really necessary. And it's not creating more ease. Right? That's the thing in our practice, right? That when we put in too much effort thinking that if we just work harder, it will make the pose better. We don't always create more ease. We sometimes create more tension. We walk out of class and our bodies are like, what did you do? <laughs> and the next day we're concerned about it. Or the next day, the joints are talking saying, what did you do? Right? So comfort does not mean no effort but it also doesn't mean so much effort that you cause yourself distress. Good. Your next inhale, when again, you can lift and lengthen your spine with the arms nice and straight, pull those arm bones up and in. Good, stay at the angle that you're at. Draw your low rib cage in. Good, draw your low belly in. So hollow everything from the front to the back. Good, and now again, lift your chest without letting the ribs push forward, pull your armpits up at that angle towards your toes. Nice. And then go ahead and walk yourself all the way back up to seated. Bend your knees, cross the ankles, roll forward onto hands and knees. And here you can move your props to the side if you've been sitting on them. Good. Stretch your right leg way back behind you, toes tucked on the floor. Good. Drop the right heel to flat. So your baby toe parallels the back of your mat. Take your right arm up to the sky. Good, a deep breath in as you push down to that left hand, reach up through the right. As you exhale, wrap that right arm around in front of you, reach it underneath your left armpit. So it's like you're trying to reach back behind you underneath your left rib cage. Good, and then come back up to where you began, inhaling, stretching the arm up and open, stretching through the chest. And then exhale, wrap that arm around in front again, underneath you. Good, keep that heel planted to the floor. Take the right arm back up to the sky, open. 
Good, try to keep your right hip stacked and then exhale one more time, pull that arm around, keeping your hips open. So it's like you're trying to rotate your hips wide as you reach underneath and then come all the way back up, arm to the sky. Good, and then release that hand down to the floor. Cramp in, my hip. Cramp in your hip. <laughs> yep, there we go. Come on back to hands and knees, please. And then press back to downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. <laughs> Sometimes that's what happens when hips are tight and we ask them to be our sole support in a pose is that all those outer hip muscles, especially when that, that hip that's on the floor, the knee that's on the floor, that hip that's holding you in that position because it is being asked to rotate, right? It's, it's rotated in that position. Is that if those muscles are tight is they can sometimes spasm because they're already over tight, all right? So if that happens to you, don't worry. <laughs> right leg comes up and back behind you, down dog split. You could bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, stack the right hip on top of the left and then start to circle that knee. So you're in that open down dog split, move your knee, nice. Good just in case you too have tight outer hips. <laughs> Same thing could happen here in down dog though, right? That leg that's supporting you very easily that if there's over tightness there is that you can get that sensation of spasm. Good, take that leg straight up and back behind you, down dog split. Good, release the foot down to the floor, down forward facing dog. Come forward to plank pose. Good, lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Beautiful, point the toes back behind you and then feel yourself as you press into your hands, physically feel yourself move an inch or so forward on your mat. So drag yourself along the floor on your belly. Good, now press into your hands and inhale, lift head, neck and chest into Cobra Pose, press down through the tops of your feet and still feel like you're trying to drag yourself along the floor. Good, and then exhale, release please, downward facing dog, tuck your toes, lift your hips. Awesome. And then take your left leg up and back behind you, down dog split, bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, stack the left hip on top of the right, circle the knee. And no, I didn't forget about the other pose on the second side. Although most of the time that's what we'd prefer, right? Oh, I didn't have a good experience on the first side. I'll just skip the second side. Thank you. Yeah. This part of me didn't really enjoy that. I'll just skip it. Good, you guys. Keep those hips up, 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 Michael. Good, and then go ahead and come back, straightening the leg back to down dog split. Nice job, release that foot down to the floor, downward facing dog, slide forward to plank pose. Good, lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Good, point the toes back behind you, rise up cobra. Again, dragging yourself along the floor first and then feel the back of the heart start to rise forward and up. Nice. And then exhale, release, please. Press yourself back up onto hands and knees. Good. And now the left leg comes back behind you, toes tucked on the floor. Drop that heel to flat. Stretch the left arm up to the sky. Press down through that right shin. Good, so a deep breath in, get long through the chest and then exhale, bring the left arm around in front of you, wrap it behind your right armpit underneath you, curl, and then inhale the arm back up towards the sky, get super long, nice. Good, and then exhale, curl it around in front of you again, again, rounding into your ribs, but keep that left hip open, stretch the left arm back up towards the sky. Good, and then one more time, bring it around in front of you, curl in, round in, get into the sticky places in your spine and then stretch that arm all the way back up. Nice, Susan. Good, and then release that hand down to the floor, come back to hands and knees. Good, step yourself back into plank pose, upward push up. Good. Lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Good, point the toes back behind you. Keep your right hand where it is. Extend your left arm out in front of you, straight out in front of you. So you're doing a one-armed cobra. So you're pressing down to your right hand the same way you would for cobra, dragging back, keep your feet on the floor. Inhale, lift head, neck, and chest. Take that left arm up with you alongside your ear. So it shouldn't be lower than your ear. Want it all the way up. So you're reaching through your sideways. Yeah. And then release, come on down, switch the hands, plant the left hand alongside your ribs, right arm extends, and then inhale up into that one-armed cobra. Again, keep your feet on the floor, do not clench your butt. 
Uh huh. And then release back down, switch your hands, right hand plants, left arm forward. Inhale up into that one arm cobra, press down into your shins, do not clench your butt. Make it feel, bring that burn into your middle back. <laughs> and then release, please. Left hand plants, right arm forward. Inhale up into that one armed cobra. Again, chest pulls forward, arm pulls back. Nice. Release one more time each side. Right hand plants, left arm forward. Inhale up, one armed cobra. Keep your feet on the floor. Mm -hmm. Notice that you do clench your butt and then try to squeeze your shins a little bit more and feel your uh, clenching get a little less. Release back down. Last time, left hand plants, right arm forward. Inhale up, one armed cobra pose. Good. And then release. Nice. Make a pillow with your hands. Rest for a moment. <laughs> Yeah. Ideas of comfort. Do you wrap yourself in the familiar and call that comfort even when the familiar comes with the same amount of restriction and pain? Right, if that is our habit, right? Oh, my lower back always hurts. Oh, my knee always does that. Oh, my neck always feels this way. I would rather deal with that than put in the effort of trying to change it. That's part of why we practice is to give the body an opportunity, right? We trick it almost by doing the poses. We trick it into experiencing a openness that it didn't have before. And then hopefully the thought is, is that you'll like it so much that you'll keep doing yoga to maintain it. Good, you guys. Separate your feet as wide as your mat. Good, take your arms out in front of you, straight out in front of you. Cross your right uh, wrist over your left or right arm over left. Good, and then you're rolling towards your left hip. So as you roll onto that left hip, you're gonna bring that right arm back behind you. Good, maybe I said that wrong. No, I said it right. Yeah, so you're rolling onto your left hip, right arm comes back behind you into a twist, but you're keeping your feet as wide as your mat. Good. So Lisa, you can just stretch that right arm straight back from the shoulder if that's more comfortable or keep it where it is. That looks pretty good. Nice, you guys. Breathe from your armpit to your hip. Nice. Excellent, you guys. Where we are trying to arrive at with this practice we always say that the original goal of the physical postures was to make it possible for us to do what? Sit. <laughs> the goal is for you to be able to sit for a long time, sustainably, comfortably, where you weren't thinking about it so that your mind could experience meditation. Now, just think of what an accomplishment it is to be able to sit without pain in any scenario. Even if you don't plan to meditate, sit without pain while you watch TV, sit without pain while you visit with friends or loved ones, not be afraid of sitting on the floor because you don't know if you'll be able to get up. This is the goal of yoga, right? It's to live without unnecessary pain. Bring yourself back to center, place back onto your belly. Good. Feet are still nice and wide. Switch the cross of your hands. So take the left arm over top of the right in front of you. And then you're leaning or rolling onto the right hip. Good. As you lean onto the right hip, you're bringing your left arm up and back behind you into the twist on the other side, keeping your feet nice and wide. Good. And again, that arm can be at whatever angle it needs to be to make the twist make sense. Try and keep your feet on the floor. So again, that arm might be closer to up alongside your ear than straight back. Yeah, the idea is you wanna get that sort of cross action from shoulder to hip. Good. And so making space in the spine, especially the lower part of the spine is very important for seated positions.
recognizing the connection of the muscles of the legs up into the pelvis and the lower spine, very important for seated positions, that if we don't open up both, then we don't have a great capacity to be able to sit comfortably. Good. Take one more deep breath. Again, breathing from armpit to hip, hip to armpit, through the length of the legs. And then slowly find your way back onto your belly. You could bring your feet a little closer to each other so that they're hip, hip width again. Uncross the wrists, but keep your arms forward alongside your ears. Press down through the front of your pelvic bones, through the pubis bone, lower edge of the pelvis, and then lift the legs up off the floor, lift the arms up off the floor, upper chest up off the floor, so Superman position, and then start to kick your feet up and down and pedal your arms up and down, right? This is Pilates swimming. So not literally how you would swim. You're not going to survive if you swim this way in the water. <laughs> so kick your feet and pump your arms up and down. Good. You can try to coordinate it if you like, but just try and get your arms and your legs going at roughly the same pace. Good, keep your chest up, feel again, you want that burn to be in the middle of your back, your upper back, you're gonna feel it in your legs too, I know. Doesn't matter how high everything is, but keep those movements moving from your inner thighs and shoulders. Good, keep going. <laughs> I should have started with the baby shark tune for you so I could say <laughs> swim faster do 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 swim faster do 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 swim faster do 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 swim faster deep breath in lift everything and exhale release safe at last that's how that song ends <laughs> safe at last take a breath <laughs> safe from what your insane yoga instructor <laughs> And then find your way slowly onto your back. <laughs> Good. I always say slowly just because I don't want you to yank yourself there, but you know, find your way onto your back, slow or fast, whatever works. Nice. All right, stretch both legs up to the sky, please. I didn't say being on your back was gonna be relaxing. <laughs> stretch your legs up to the sky, stretch your arms out wide, letter T, pressing down through the palms, so palms face down. So again, I want you to press down into the arms and extend out, and then pull that lower rib cage down and in, try and squeeze the feet towards each other. So squeeze the legs together if you can. Good, and make sure your heels are on top of your hips as much as you can. And then start to draw little spirals with your legs. So the legs are together, start to draw little spirals. And imagine that you're drawing those spirals from your lower belly. So your belly is actually drawing the spiral and moving your legs. And you're keeping your rib cage rooting down, moving as little as you possibly can. Knees can be bent here a little bit if that's necessary, right? Good. Good, start to spiral your legs the other direction. Mm -hmm. Again, do it from your belly. Try not to swing your legs to move them around. Try to do it from your low belly, drawing those circles. Don't worry if it's frustrating. <laughs> don't worry if you don't like it. <laughs> Good, nice. Bring yourself back to stillness, please. Back to center, keep the legs up, flex your feet. Now take the legs out wide to a straddle. Good, again, knees can be subtly bent. You want your, your, your uh, feet in line with your hips, so don't let them come forward. Nice, and then squeeze the legs all the way back up together. Squeeze them up, squeeze them up, squeeze them up. Good, and then push them wide. Don't let them just fall wide, but push them wide. Good, nice, nice, nice. And then squeeze them all the way up together. You're doing it, Michael, you got it. <laughs> yeah, bend the knees in between, absolutely. Good, stretch the legs out wide one more time. Again, pressing them wide, purposefully taking them wide, feeling the low belly engage to the spine. And then squeeze the legs all the way back together. Beautiful, hug the right knee, uh, hug both knees in towards your chest, go for it. Oh. Nice, lift your shoulders just a little bit. So it's like you're curling your forehead towards your knees, roll forward and back on your spine. Just a little bit, you're not coming up to sit, just roll a little bit on your spine. Good, and then relax the shoulders back down to the floor. Nice job, take your right ankle on top of your left thigh. 
Good, flexing the foot, lift your left shin parallel to the floor again. If you place it down, reach through to hold that thigh if you'd like, or again, you can let the legs do the work themselves. Good, and as you hold that thigh, press the thigh back against your hands and try and press the lowest part of your tail down towards the floor. So again, from internally, you're trying to draw the uh, low abdominal, so below your belly button towards your sacrum. So imagine when I say press your sacrum down to the floor is what I'm really saying is take the front of your uh, abdomen down to the floor. Try to draw that line from the front of your body all the way down to the sacrum, all the way down into the floor. So that there's an automatic drawing the front abdominals towards the lower back. Nice, you guys. And then press the thigh into your hands. The top of the thigh is moving away from the belly. Excellent. Good. Take one more breath. And then still holding the thigh, stretch the left heel up towards the sky. So straighten that leg. Good. Notice if you were sort of that person in the beginning when I said, oh, when you flex your foot, your knee hyperextends. If the, you are one of those people, soften your knee a little bit. <laughs> Good. And then a deep breath in here. So uh, for some of you, you can actually move the hands here so that they are now above your ankle. So you're reaching for the calf instead of the thigh. And if you're happy where you are, stay. So as you exhale here, opportunity is to lift the shoulders up off of the floor, curl in, walk your hands up towards the ankle any amount. Good. And then as you're curled here, start to already, as you're drawing the legs in closer to the belly, now try and press your sacrum back down to the floor. So you're still curled, but try and press your low back down to the floor, tail down to the floor. Nice. Now start to lower your shoulders back down, bring the leg with you any amount and root that sacrum down to the floor. Good. So you really have to fold through your thigh creases. Nice, you guys. Bend that left knee again. Whatever you did, good job. <laughs> Keep the ankle over the knee, release that left foot down to the floor and then move your feet over to the left. So let your legs drop to your left. So your right foot is gonna come flat to the floor. Ankle is still against that left thigh. Good. And then try to, again, internally bring that right side low back down to the floor, right side sacrum down to the floor. Good. Once you've done that, you've tried to work that sacrum down towards the floor. Then you can try and lift that inner knee a little higher up towards the ceiling. And again, back of the rib cage roots down. So if you're arching through your lower back to try and make this work, practice taking the ribs down, softening, feeling the wideness of the middle rib cage. So the hip won't be down. For most people, that right hip will not be down. Okay. For some people, it will okay. if that's what their lower back allows for. Again, for most people, that will, that will not be the case. So if your right hip is like nowhere near the floor, don't worry about it. If it is somewhere near the floor, don't worry about it. <laughs> we all have our very special places that are um, excessively tight and restricted. And our own special places where openness happens more easily for us, less effort. Good. Take one more breath on this side, pressing down into that right foot. So there's actually a little bit of pressure there. And then just feel yourself moving that right thigh away from the belly and trying to move your right side sacrum down towards the floor. So it's like you're pressing back and down. Yeah, good. And then slowly unwind, bring yourself back to center, please. Good, release that right foot down to the floor. Stack your left ankle over your right thigh. Lift the right shin parallel to the floor, reach through to hold that leg again, if you'd like, or let the legs do what they do. Arms can continue to be alongside you. Nice, you guys. Janu Shirshasana literally means head to knee pose. You wonder why would I want to be able to bring my head to my knee? <laughs> what does that even mean? Right? What it means is that you are able to fold so completely from your pelvis that the front of the body sandwiches onto the other half of the body, right? Upper body to lower body. That's really the thing, right? Is can you bring yourself all the way together? 
And if that is not the case, right, then it just gives you an indication again of where the body is holding its tightness, where it's holding its restriction. But it's funny, right? We do head to knee pose all the time and the majority of us never get our head anywhere near our knee. Good, start to straighten that right leg, please, extending the heel up towards the ceiling. So I hope you notice that, right, what I tend to do a lot is I take you into a similar position to the pose, just in a weird orientation. So where you are right now is not that far off from Janu Shirshasana. You're just upside down while you're doing it, all right? So it gives you a different way to engage with where you're tight, a different way to engage with where um, the openness in the pose happens and where it doesn't. All right, so if you would like to switch your hands to hold above the ankle instead of below, so reaching for the calf instead. And then again, optional here, if you're happy where you are, stay, but optional is to lift your shoulders up off the floor, curl into your spine, walk your hands up towards the right ankle any amount. So you're getting higher up onto the leg. So you have to fold a little bit more into your pelvis, into your thighs. Good. And then while you're still with your shoulders lifted, try and bring your sacrum down towards the floor. Yeah, good. And you're folding in at the waist. You're drawing your legs closer in as you press your tailbone down. Good, now release, release the shoulders to the floor, bring the leg with you any amount, re-root that sacrum down to the floor. Good, so the legs are moving one direction, but your pelvis is trying to reach the other way. Nice, you guys. And then go ahead and bend your right knee, please. Place that right foot down to the floor, left ankle is still stacked and then let your legs drop over to the right. So your left foot is gonna come flat to the floor, ankle is still pressing up against the right thigh. Good, try and bring your left side sacrum back and down. So it's like you're trying to push backwards into that twist and then you can start to angle your left knee up towards the ceiling any amount that it's willing to go. Good, if you try to angle the knee first, it's going to make it very difficult for you to then bring the sacrum down because now the you know, two sides of that hip joint are not working together. So if you're struggling with the back, let your knee fall in towards the belly a little bit more, let it internally rotate more and work that lower sacrum down towards the floor, work the twist first. Then you can relift the knee. If you just go lifting the knee as you're gonna totally lock yourself up at, your, at the back of your hip. Good. So again, it's where your effort in the pose is going to be useful to create opening and not where more effort just creates more <laughs> tension. That's a lot of our life, right? I'm just asked to work really hard and I have no idea why. <laughs> Don't feel better because of it. Learning to use your effort skillfully. One of the teachings of yoga. Good, you guys keep softening your ribs towards the floor. So even if you feel like your hips are in a pretty open place here, but your ribs are popping up, you're arching your back, draw your middle ribs down towards the floor. Good. Nice, Taylor. Nice, Becca. Dina, you look great. And then slowly come on back to center, please. Unwinding your legs. Good. Hug the knees in towards your chest. Take the knees wide for happy baby. Reach for your ankles or inner or outer edges of the feet. Then point the soles of the feet up towards the sky. So you're stacking the heels over the knees. Beautiful. And then here too, See if you can bend, uh, bend your elbows a little bit. So again, you have this feeling of taking the shoulders wider and then try and bring the lowest part of your tailbone down towards the floor in child's pose, not child's pose, happy baby, my gosh. Good, relax your throat, relax your neck, relax your jaw as best you can. Good, keep rooting down from inside, try and bring your tail down towards the floor. Beautiful, nice Lisa, good, nice Dana. You got it, you guys. Then hug your knees all the way back in towards your chest, squeeze. Again, lift your shoulders up off the floor, roll forward and back on your spine. Good, this time let yourself roll all the way up to sit. Good, and then turn over onto hands and knees. Good, and then bring your hands up onto your knees. You're in a high kneeling position. 
and extend your right leg out wide to the right. If you need a blanket underneath your knees, make sure you have it. Right leg out wide to the right. Heel should be in line with your left knee. You got it. Yep. Upright, so shoulders are on top of hips. Take your arms out wide, letter T. Yep. Good, slide the right hand down the right leg. Take the left arm over your ear, side stretch. Good, so you can imagine, right, if head to knee pose in John Shasana is a forward action, right? How do I lean forward and bring my head to my knee? The second variation, because it's a side stretching pose, is how do I bring the side of my head to my knee? <laughs> how do I do it? So you tell me. Take a deep breath here. And then slide that right hand a little further down the leg. Really surprise yourself that if you go further, you're not going to die. Keep your legs engaged. Nice, one more deep breath. And then navel to spine, feel like you're squeezing your left side waist as you, all, as you come all the way back up. So you actually engage those oblique abdominals. Beautiful, good. And then go ahead and bring the left hand down to the floor or a block out to the left. Bring your right arm over the ear. You got it, Dana. So you're reaching first, extending through the arm. And then if you can, lift that right leg up off the floor and extend out through the heel. So whole side length. Good. You got it, you got it, you got it. Nice, Taylor, throat back. Good, Kristen. Good, release that foot back down to the floor, please. Come all the way back up. Awesome, and then switch the legs, please. So right knee comes to the floor underneath the hips. Extend the left leg out to the left. Good, gate pose, parigrasana. Good, heel should be in line with the right knee. So make sure your pelvic bones are not uh, at an angle, right? You want them to be straight ahead. So Becca, you gotta move your left foot forward more. Yep, and I have to gesture, even though you're not, probably not looking forward more. <laughs> there you go. Arms out wide, stretch the left arm down, the left leg, right arm comes over the ear. Also notice, right, as you're coming into this position, if you are leaning all of your weight onto that right leg or you're letting that, sorry, your left leg, you're letting it lean out, slide out from under you almost, then you want to reverse that action, right? You want to be pulling that left thigh up and in as you extend your side waist. Good. Nice, you guys. And then let that left hand slide down even a little further. Keep squeezing the, the legs towards each other, pulling that left thigh up and in. So you're not letting all of your weight fall into that left side. Good. And then again, squeezing the right side waist as you come all the way back up to center. Nice. And then bring the right arm out and wide down to the floor or block to the right. Stretch your left arm over the ear. And then if you can, lift that left leg up off the floor. Good. Draw that same area below the belly button in towards the middle of your sacrum. So draw the, the front of the abdomen towards the back. Nice, good Susan. You got it, Sue. Really good, you guys. And then slowly release, bring the foot back down. Nice, Lisa, come all the way back up. Beautiful, come back to hands and knees. Do a little cat and cow. Always trying to remember what are you going, where are you aiming to arrive at with your practice? What does comfort mean? What does peace mean? What does ease mean? What are your conditions for that? Because we're told, of course, that there is that unconditional ability that we can experience those things within whatever turmoil and craziness is happening in our life right now. But for us to feel that it's something that's real for us is what are your conditions? What does it mean for you to be without pain? Be able to sit comfortably. And your practice is meant to work for you. If you're practicing in a way that doesn't even get you anywhere near or closer to what you say you're practicing for, your effort is not being used very skillfully. You're not finding space, creating more tension. You're not using your effort skillfully. Come back to neutral spine, please. So neither arch nor curl. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, come into downward facing dog. Good. 
And then step the right foot forward between the hands, lunge. Drop the back heel, baby toe parallels back of your mat. Take the arms up to warrior two. Vira Badrasana two. Good, and then bring the right forearm onto the front thigh. Take the left arm over the ear, side angle. Good. So you're pressing into your front heel, squeeze your feet towards each other. Beautiful. And then cartwheel the arms back up to warrior two. Mm -hmm. And then bring the right forearm back onto the thigh, left arm over the ear, side angle. Good. Feeling that stretch from armpit to hip. So lift your left inner thigh a little higher so that you get that sensation of actually stretching the whole left side body. Come back to warrior two, cartwheel the arms back up. Notice I'm making you use those same side waist muscles. Right forearm to the front thigh, left arm over the ear. Good, now keep your left arm where it is. Take your right arm up off of your thigh and just stretch it straight forward in front of your chest. So reaching uh, perpendicular to the floor, parallel to the floor. Sorry, your left arm is, is reaching towards the top of your mat. Right arm is reaching underneath, twisting. That's it. Good, you got it. And then cartwheel yourself all the way back up to warrior two. Blech. Straighten your right leg. Good, trikonasana, extend out through that right side waist, pause, pull your rib cage in, pull your tail towards your back heel. So it's gonna feel like you're folding in ribs to pelvis. Good, opposite of what you're doing, Dana, curl in. That's it, good. And then let that right hand touch down to the floor, left arm to the sky. Don't let those ribs push forward. Don't let them. <laughs> I know you want to, but don't let them. Instead, start to rotate your left rib cage open a little higher towards the ceiling and keep drawing in. Keep feeling like you're folding your front ribs towards your tail. Good, and then lift that back thigh higher towards the back of your mat. Nice. Excellent, you guys. One more breath. Good, bend the right knee, please release the hands down to the floor, spin your back heel up, drop that knee down to the floor, walk your hands inside the front foot, walk towards the upper left-hand corner of your mat, come on down to your forearms if you'd like or stay where you are. Get an opportunity to stretch hips, lower back, middle back, shoulders. Understanding comfort means that we also have to start to understand our discomfort. That's why I like this style of practicing where you deconstruct a pose because how do you get there? Well, you have to understand what the pose is built from. In the same way to understand our comfort, we have to start to deconstruct, reverse engineer our discomfort. How did I get here to where I'm uncomfortable? And again, the yogic practice is to do that without judgment for how you got here, why you got here, is just to realize, oh, these are the steps that built my discomfort. This is how I dismantle that. Walk yourself all the way back in, please. You take your left hand to the floor, take your right arm to the sky, twist, and then flex your right foot a lot, drop onto the baby toe, let your knee go wide for a moment as you lean onto that left hand and stretch the right arm over your ear towards the upper left-hand corner of your mat. So open chest, move your belly and thigh away from each other. Nice, Lisa, watch that left shoulder doesn't collapse forward, pull it wide. Yes, beautiful, you guys. And then bring that foot back to the floor, release the hand to the floor. Nice job, lift your back knee. Downward facing dog. Good, vinyasa if you really want, <laughs> or child's pose or hang out and dog. If you're doing the vinyasa, come forward to plank, lower down to your belly, rise up cobra, come back downward facing dog. Always inspired when I say vinyasa if you want, and some of you go for it. <laughs> Good, meet us back in dog if you were taking a siesta. <laughs> and then step your left foot forward between the hands, please. Good, drop the back heel, baby toe parallels back of your mat, come into warrior two, Vira Badrasana two. Good, 
The left forearm comes onto front thigh, right arm comes over the ear side angle. So again, on this side, because you know where you're going, I guarantee you're hanging back in your lunge because you're like, no way. I don't want to go to my full capacity and have to stay there. So bring that knee forward over the ankle. There you go. You know what just happened is your back hip softened in. You actually made more space. That's why we say that. Not because it's harder to do, but because it gives you more space. Cartwheel the arms back up to warrior two. Try not to move that knee. I know. And then bring the left forearm onto the front thigh, right arm over the ear. Make as many faces and mean noises as you want, but try to maintain that knee over the ankle because it's going to give you more stretch on that right hip. Come back to warrior two. I know. Left forearm onto front thigh, right arm over the ear. And this is how we train the body to say that this is not so uncomfortable that you're going to die. Keep your right arm over the ear, lift your left forearm up, and then stretch it out straight from the chest. So you've got that crisscrossed arms. Good. So it's like you're twisting. That arm underneath you is reaching straight from the chest. Open, open, open. You got it. So it's the same position as when the forearm's on the, on the thigh. It's just lifted. Good. Kurt will back to warrior two. Straighten your front leg. Thank God. <laughs> Trikonasana. Start to extend out through that left side ribs. I know if you're like, if triangle pose is what's coming next, I'll stick with <laughs> whatever the first thing was. And then start to let yourself come into where that left hand is reaching for the floor or a block, right arm to the sky, but fold ribs and pelvis towards each other. Good. And this is true for people who are very flexible and people who are not particularly flexible. Everybody wants to do triangle this way, where we push the ribs forward and we arch the lower back. And we do weird things that compress that front hip, right? So fold ribs to pelvic bones. It's going to feel like you are rounded in your back. You are a little bit. That's good because most of us are used to being contracted. So get round. And then work the twist of your right rib cage open more. Nice. You can always re-extend the spine, but work this feeling of not automatically assuming that your ribs pushed forward is the correct position to be in. Because that's not you working harder, that's you making less space in your body to try and think that you're doing this pose the hardest you can. <laughs> you don't need to be extreme. Good, one more breath, soften the ribs, tail reaches towards your back heel. So there's a subtle tuck. Good, and then bend the left knee, please release the hands down to the floor. Yeah, you should be roughly exhausted, you know, a little <laughs> bit exhausted after triangle. Spin your back heel up, drop that knee, take both hands inside the front foot, walk to the upper right hand corner of your mat, come down to your forearms if you'd like. Stay where you are on fingertips or blocks. So last week, mm -hmm. my thighs were burning for a couple of days after Yeah, what's going to be burning tomorrow? That's the good. <laughs> that's the good question. It's going to be burning. Yeah, and much of this practice again, you know. In the old world, yoga might have been something that was largely to just open up space in the body. But in our modern world, we need this practice not just to open up space, but to recondition, right? Our body is atrophied in so many ways because of our lifestyle, most of us, right? So we can't just say this, this, uh, these poses are meant to stretch us. Is these poses are meant to get us to learn our bodies in a way that life doesn't make us do anymore, right? If it ever did. So yeah, you've got to learn how to use muscles in a way, and they're going to burn when you use them. That's not a bad thing. Right? We want there to be that line where we know when we're crossing over into pain, but we also want our effort to be meaningful, purposeful. You know, that burn, if it happens for a day or two, but then your movements are more easeful and stronger and more accessible, that's what you want. Come on up back onto the hands. Good. Plant that right hand, take the left arm up to the sky. Flex that left foot a lot. Let your knee start to drop wide any amount. As you lean onto that right hand, so you're opening the chest more, falling the, uh, bringing the belly away from the thigh, letting the thigh fall away from the belly. Throat back. Really nice, Taylor. Good, Sue. Nice, Kristen. Nice, Susan. Nice, Michael, Lisa, Lindsay, everybody. 
Good, Dana. And then come all the way back up, foot, foot to the floor, hands to the floor. Beautiful. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. Walk both hands inside the front foot, walk to your right as you come to the center of your mat, turn your toes, Prasarita Padottanasana. Mascot of this class. <laughs> really is. Every week I think is, am I, am I gonna do a flow that does not involve this pose? And the answer is no. <laughs> Might just always be there. Good. Bring your right hand to your outer left ankle or shin. And again, if reaching for the foot or the leg is really not available, then plant the hand anywhere that is to the right of center, right? If you're not holding the leg, just plant the hand anywhere right of center and then stretch the right arm up to the sky. Did I say that wrong? Left arm up to the sky, sorry. Right hand is reaching for your left leg. Left arm is up to the sky. <laughs> just use both your right arms. I don't know. Good, so you're really using that connection of the right hand to your leg, keep that there, and then start to let your head, your shoulders fall back towards your left toes. So lengthen your spine the other way, like you're trying to draw your belly away from your thigh, even as you draw your chest to your thigh. <laughs> there you go, release and come back to center, please. Nice, Taylor. Good, pause for a breath there. Again, notice if you are someone who hyperextends your knees, soften your knees. And then start to move the other way, left hand to outer right ankle or shin, right arm comes to the sky. And again, once you found that twist, so yeah, you're turning your ribs, you're turning your belly towards that thigh, keep your left leg pulling wide, but then start to lean towards that opposite diagonal, move your, your shoulders towards that left leg and let that left shoulder curl under even more. Yeah, but then take the right rib cage back towards that left leg. Good. You have no idea what I'm talking about, but good. Excellent, you guys. Release the hand back down, come back to center. Good job. Walk towards the top of your mat, turn the left toes forward, spin the back heel up, step back downward facing dog. Deep breath in, and then drop the knees to the floor, child's pose. <laughs> good. I don't know where the time goes in this class. I always look up and I'm like, how is it time already? Mm -hmm. Find your breath. Janu Shirshasana, I bring my head to my knee. Where is my head pointing? Where's my mind pointing? That's a big one in yoga. Uh, take your one last breath here, <laughs> your one last final child's pose, pose breath ever, and then walk yourself all the way back up. <laughs> nice, you guys. Come to sit on your butt. And if you would like to use a blanket again underneath your seat, if it is the habit of your body that your um, lower back tends to curl under or you're falling backwards behind your sit bones, then a prop underneath the seat is a really good idea. I kind of want to, Michael, have you use this just because the block gives you a lot of negative space underneath your knee. Yeah. So the difference between you guys using a blanket underneath you here or a block is that that higher seat, while it might feel good for your lower back, is in a forward fold where a leg is extended is that's a lot of negative space underneath the knee, um, which is not usually a happy place for that joint. So always my suggestion that the blanket or even two blankets is going to be a little bit more easeful than that. And if you have to, if you're up super high for your pelvis, have a blanket or something underneath the straight leg, underneath the knee so that you don't have that negative space. So stretch your right leg straight out in front of you. Good. Left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Good. And press that foot into the thigh as though you are doing tree. So you're sitting on the ground, but I want you to act like you're doing tree. So you're pressing that foot flat of the foot all the way into the thigh. So you're not just letting the foot turn. You're not just letting the ankle turn, but you're pushing that foot in and pressing your right inner thigh into the foot. So activate the legs, pulling in towards the midline. Good. And then feel both sit bones on the floor. Again, leaning slightly forward with your shoulders so that you can really tip forward onto the pelvis. Good. Take 
your hands to frame your right leg. So one hand on either side, and using the hands, framing the front foot, start to twist your belly towards that leg. So you're turning your left hip forward, left side ribs forward, and then pause there, still upright, just on your fingertips. Press into your hands, similar to where you were in that cat, straight-legged cat cow we were doing. Press into your hands, feel yourself lift your chest higher, leaning slightly forward, start to pull your heart forward between the arms and pull back on the hands. So you're still just leaning upright. You're not walking forward yet. You're just pressing down into the hands, lengthening your spine, press your sit bones back. Good. Keep your, your foot and your thigh pressing against each other. Now walk your hands forward a little bit more, almost like that. Again, like a down dog position. So your arms are extended a little bit further but press into your fingertips, lift your chest. So the angle that you're at, you're not falling into that rounding and then walk yourself forward a little bit more. Like you're gonna bring your belly to your thigh. Good, so don't focus head to knee yet. Let yourself think belly to thigh. And that doesn't mean push my ribs forward. That means tilt my pelvic bones forward and bring my thigh creases back and soft. Good, and then keep walking yourself forward just a little further, keep your foot and your thigh connected to each other. Nice. And then at the last breath, wherever you are, now go ahead and let yourself round just a little bit into your, into your ribs. So round on purpose, like you're doing cat cow. So as you drop the head, round into your back rib cage, press your seat down more. So when you round to ground into your seat more. Good. So round, 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 pull your belly back and up off of your thighs. Good. So this is me telling you, right? Bring your head to your knee, <laughs> simulate that. And now with that roundness pressing down into your seat, keep your navel engaged, but start to extend your side ribs again. Like you're gonna bring your heart towards your toes. I know this is still just a straight ahead variation. Can you believe it? And then walk yourself all the way back up. All right. Now take your left knee wider out to the left. So you're in a little bit more of a half straddle. You could alternatively pull your right leg wider to the right, your choice. Left heel is still in towards the groin, but now that foot might not be actually touching your thigh. That's totally fine. You still feel both sit bones on the ground or on your prop, right? Good. So you wanna make sure that there's still this feeling of pressing down through your left shin, pressing down into your sit bones. So your legs are still engaged. There's still that feeling of drawing in towards the center. Now walk your right hand towards the inside of your right heel. Good, stretching long as though you're coming into triangle, don't just collapse. So as you walk that arm out, keep the arm straight, lift your side waist like you're in triangle pose, pull that right armpit towards your right heel. So extend, and then notice that you're doing the exact same thing that you would in triangle, you're pushing your ribs forward. So pull your ribs in, drop your tail round into that lowest part of your back, navel engaged, and then walk yourself out a little further to the right. Mm -hmm. Just like gate pose where you're like, oh, I don't wanna go any further. Keep going further, keep walking yourself out, press down through that left sit bone. And then at the last moment, if you'd like, stretch that left arm either up to the sky, over your ear, behind your head. And if you know that this is a place where you can go really deep and you wanna drop that right forearm to the floor and bring your left hand to hold your right big toe and do that, quintessential yogi thing, go for it. <laughs> if you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. Nice, Taylor. Good, Becca. You got it, Lindsay. Yep. And then slowly release, come all the way back up. Nice, you guys. Oh, do you feel alive? Yes. Yes. Switch sides, please. Left leg comes straight forward in front of you. Bend the right knee. Place the bottom of the foot to the inside of the left leg. Again, as though you're doing tree, but you're sitting down. So keeping the legs really engaged is a big part of how forward, seated forward folds work. So you have to engage the legs for there to be enough support for the spine to extend. If you don't engage the legs, you're gonna to try to extend the spine and all you're gonna be doing is falling into the momentum of leaning forward. You're not actually getting anywhere, right? So connect the legs and then hands on either side of that left leg, frame the foot. Start to walk your hands forward, tipping forward. So bringing your shoulders forward, bringing the front of your pelvic bones leaning forward, thigh creases push back, tailbone pushes back, press into the hands and drag back to pull your chest long. And then again, soften the ribs in. 
and then keep walking your hands out further and further, but extending heart to your toes, belly to thigh. Keep your legs and foot engaged, pressing against each other. And then at the last moment, start to drop your head towards your knee, round on purpose. So pull up through the back of your rib cage, press down into your seat, curling into the belly, round and round and round. And then keep that rooted in your seat and start to again, extend from your pelvic bones, tip forward, and then bring the armpits forward more, lengthening from your hip to your ribs, hip to armpit. Nice, you guys. And then slowly come all the way back up. Good, widen the legs, either taking the left leg out wider to the left or bringing the right knee wider to the right or both. Right heel should still be in towards the groin. So it's sort of like a half Baddha Konasana. Good. Still engage the legs, even if the foot is not touching the left inner thigh. Good. So squeezing everything in. And then walk your left hand towards your left heel, but keep the arm straight. Again, almost like you're doing a seated triangle pose. Good. Start to turn your rib cage open. Do you press that left hand down? Lengthen your left armpit. Actually shift your ribs to the left to try and pull yourself as long as you can towards that extended leg. And then let yourself walk out even a little further. Let yourself drop down even a little deeper. Press through your right butt cheek. Keep the legs squeezing in. Good, just keep walking yourself out and out and out. Soften the ribs in. Again, fold ribs to pelvic bones. Let that right rib cage open a little wider. And then if you wanna go for that, bending the elbow, dropping it down inside the shin, taking the arm over the ear, reach for your foot if that's where you're going. Good. Keep the arm over the ear or hand behind your head. Nice, Michael, keep your feet awake. Yeah, and then come all the way back up, squeezing those side waist muscles. Really good, you guys. Really nice. And then bring the bottoms of the feet together, please. One more Baddha Konasana of your choice. It's your favorite way to do Baddha Konasana. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> so your hands can be holding the feet, you can thread the arms underneath the knees, you can extend the arms forward, Baddha Konasana. Good. contemplating, right? What your conditions are for you to label something as comfortable. Does it require it to be familiar? Is it required for it to be something you've done before? Are you looking for a state that is really open or are you looking for one where you know all of the edges, all of the boundaries? We're hoping that with a yoga practice, our conditions for our happiness and contentment and all of the things that we say are the result is that those conditions start to disappear, where we allow those experiences to be part of our everyday. Walk yourself back up, please. Slowly find your way onto your backs. If you're in the room with me, turn yourself to your headspace center of the room. If you're at home, wherever you'd like to be. You're wondering to yourself, why did we have to work so hard to do a seated pose? <laughs> but that is my favorite is that we should put as much effort into a seated position as we put into any other. In our mind, we shouldn't make the distinction that we should try a lot harder to do something elaborate like an arm balance or an inversion, but for a seated pose, eh, no efforts, just sitting. Bend your knees, please, for a moment. Stretch your arms up overhead, hold opposite elbows. Let yourself breathe wide through your back, upper back, lower back. And then just separate your feet as wide as your mat, drop your knees to the right. If you'd like, you can cross the right ankle on top of the left thigh in this twist. If that feels like too much, stay where you are. If the arms need to change position, you can change the arms. But your effort, make it meaningful, skillful, so that it's bringing you closer, drawing you closer 
to that state of openness, ease. Come back to center, plant both feet. As wide as your mat, drop your knees to the left. And again, left ankle can come over right thigh if you'd like, or again, stay where you are. Working harder, putting more effort in, creates more tension inside. Let go of that feeling of striving. If you are in the state where you want to put no effort in whatsoever, happy to have nothing ever change, even if you are in a constant state of discomfort. Notice again, your conditions. What does it mean for you to be in pain, out of pain? What does comfort entail? Come back to center, please. Release the arms, hug the knees in towards the chest, squeeze into a little ball, forehead up to meet your knees. And then slowly release, extending the legs out in front of you, arms alongside you, find your Shavasana. Letting ease come in whatever ways that it comes, whatever positions, have a rearranging of your internal self. Very gently bring the awareness back to the breath, feeling the breath in the front of the body, the back of the body. And as you begin to let the body stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well, continue to feel your breath moving wherever it moves. As you draw the knees and towards the chest, roll to your right side. Pause for a moment again, breathing, not just into the front of the body, but into the back, into all of these small spaces of yourself expand. And then as you're ready, press the floor away, come back up to an upright seated position. And pause for a moment, hands together at the heart center and wonder to yourself, could you meditate here? 
your inner state, your inner self in a place where you could let your mind go from this material world and feel something else, not as escape, but as an invitation. And if the answer is no, well, that's why we practice again tomorrow. <laughs> but just to be aware that what are the conditions for you internally to be in that state of peace, ease, comfort? What does it mean? Because if that's what we're aiming for, then your practice should be bringing you there. And if it's not, then maybe your effort can be used more skillfully. Because just working harder is not how we progress in this practice. But if the goal is to be able to sit inside of ourselves with less tension, more ease, then what are your conditions for that to be the case, to be true? Work with that. Close the sound of OM, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your night, a great rest of your week until I see you again. And I will tell you the pose that you didn't choose for tonight was pigeon. <laughs> Thanks, Veronica. Yeah, except the lottery resets next week. No guarantee that pigeon will even be in the running. Oh. Good night. <laughs>